All right. Does uh does everybody have one last beer? <laughs> I uh I really appreciate you guys hanging around for my talk. Uh, I'm not gonna lie. Uh, I uh, I'm married and I have two young children, so this is way past my bedtime. Um, I'm 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 loading up on caffeine just so that I can kind of kind of get through this. So I'm a uh, I'm really, I'm really impressed uh, at your staying power. But, uh, but my name is uh, Carter Rabasa, and I'm a developer evangelist for a little company called Twilio. Uh, and, uh, and I just want to spend, uh, hopefully, not <laughs> hopefully not too long, I, we've, this is obviously the, the fourth talk of the night, so I'm going to try to get through this pretty fast. Um, but I just want to talk to you a little bit about uh, Twilio uh, and WebRTC and how you can use these technologies together to turn an ordinary browser into a phone. Um, and also a little bit of hacking that I've been doing with the Web Audio API uh, to actually visualize some of the stuff that's happening on that live call. And, uh, and all of the code, uh, or most of the code, some of the code that I'm going to show you um, is, uh, is written in Ruby, um, specifically uh, written using, uh, using Sinatra. So. Uh, but first, just a little bit about me. Uh, my name is Carter. Uh, I actually don't live in Portland. I live up in Seattle, Washington. And I really love karaoke. Um, I love karaoke a lot. Um, this picture was actually taken a month ago right here in Portland um, at, a, at a karaoke place uh, here in Portland. I think it's called Voice Box. Um, yeah, and uh, it, was, uh, it was taken a month ago uh, during the, uh, the closing party for uh, a conference called Cascadia JS. Um, did anyone here attend Cascadia JS? Cool. So uh, a, f a couple of you. Um, well, I hope I hope you guys had a good. I hope the two of you that went had a good time. It's uh, it's <laughs> it's a, it's a w it's a conference for web developers. Um, so you all should uh, should check it out in the future. But it was the first uh, first time that we'd had it in Portland, um, and I had a great time. I think everyone else had a great time, and I'm really happy to be back. Quite frankly, I love Portland, um, although I also love Seattle. Uh, if, uh, if you need to get in, in touch with me uh, during the presentation, but preferably after the presentation, uh, feel free to use uh, you know, Twitter, GitHub, email. They all work. If you know my first name and my last name, Carter Robasa, you can reverse engineer almost all of these different handles. Uh, but uh, quick show of hands, who here has actually used Twilio in a piece of software that they've written? OK, wow, cool. So maybe like a quarter of you, maybe up to a third. So uh, for those of you who haven't used Twilio, um, Twilio is a company whose mission statement is to change communications forever. And that's some excellent marketing. Um, but we're developers. Uh, I'm a developer. And uh, specifically, um, the way that the company wants to do this is by migrating uh, the telecommunications industry from a legacy in hardware to a future in software. Um, so I don't know how many hardcore hardware engineers there are in this room, but I'm positive that every single one of you is a software developer. And uh, the, the entire uh, mission of the company is to put the power of telecommunications in the hands of people who write software. Uh, if we're getting down into like super specifics, um, Twilio enables you to easily and programmatically send and receive text messages and make and receive voice and voice over IP phone calls. Um, and the voice over IP part is uh, what I'm going to talk about with WebRTC. So, uh, Back in the day, um, the company was actually founded in 2008. Um, but back during the early sort of origin story of the company, um, you can imagine that if you were building a, pr a platform from scratch to allow developer A to send a text message to person B, I mean, there are a lot of ways you could skin that cat. Um, but the company very early on decided to make a really big bet on web standards. Um, and uh, in the early days, specifically, that was uh, uh, RESTful APIs and uh, a little thing called webhooks. Um, and that, that formed the, the, the architecture for how Twilio works and how a developer would actually build on top of Twilio. Um, and the reason that the company did this is because they just they believed that, um, that web developers um, were uh, uniquely capable um, of building really amazing things. Um, the people who, uh, who started Twilio didn't exactly know what people were going to build. The whole, idea of, uh, the whole idea of sort of building an API on top of telecom uh, was that it was so that you could unleash the creativity of developers, you know, on the tele the telecom industry. But it was unclear what that was going to be. So if you can imagine for a second that this sad-looking reindeer thing is sort of the traditional telecommunications industry, um, you know, people at Twilio were hoping that if we unleashed web developers on this industry, perhaps things could look something like this. <laughs> Maybe I don't know. I mean. 
and I, I mean that very seriously, right? It, it, is, it, is, it is our sincere hope that this is what the future of telecommunications looks like, <laughs> whether you're happy about that or not. <laughs> um, but, <laughs> but anyway, uh, I, uh, I, I'm, I'm really not going to run through, uh, through any more slides. Um, what I really want to do is sort of write some code um, and show you precisely how Twilio, can, how Twilio works, um, uh, specifically in the context of Ruby, um, but also some, uh, some client-side JavaScript. So I'm going to roll over here to, uh, to my app. So I have, I have a really powerful one-line web application, require Sinatra. It's totally awesome, and it works. Um, that one line of code is actually powering uh, my Reveal.js presentation. Um, it turns out if you have a, a directory called public in your directory, uh, <laughs> Sinatra just magically knows that you should serve static files from there. So that's awesome. I mean, and for a lot of applications, maybe that's all you have to write. Uh, in, the in the case of Twilio, uh, we, want to <laughs> we, we, <laughs> we are required to write uh, slightly more than that. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and create a little route called SMS. Um, uh, I'm going to write what is considered to be sort of the hello world for Twilio. It's just the simplest possible application you could possibly write. So, um, but before I can do that, um, I need to go provision a phone number. So why don't we go ahead and do that? So this is just the Twilio dashboard. Um, I'm logged in, and I can use Twilio to provision real phone numbers um, here in the US and in countries around the world. Um, can someone remind me of an area code here in Portland? 503. 503. All right, cool. So let's see if we have any 503 numbers available. And indeed, we have many, many dozens of 503 area code, uh, area code numbers available. So I can go ahead and click Buy. So it's, it's kind of like buying a domain on GoDaddy, but the process isn't miserable. Um, and <laughs> so I've, I've literally, I've, I've purchased this number. This number is now mine for all intents and purposes. Um, but I'm not done. Um, uh, I, I mentioned uh, this thing earlier called webhooks. And some of you might be wondering, well, what's that? Um, a webhook is just a URL that you can define um, that will get called when a certain event happens. That's just sort of the generic uh, notion of what a webhook is. Um, in this case, uh, my phone number has two webhooks. One is called a voice request URL, and one's called a messaging request URL. Anytime someone calls this phone number, this URL is going to get called. Um, anytime someone sends a text message to this phone number, uh, this messaging request URL is going to get called. Um, and this is awesome. Like the, w the main reason that this is awesome is because Everything about how your Twilio application works is, uh, is owned by you and run on your servers. You can build a Twilio application in any programming language you want. You can host it anywhere you want. So long as Twilio can hit a publicly addressable URL, um, you can write your app any way, um, any way that you like. Uh, so cool. So I want to write a real simple web application or a Twilio application where you all can send uh, an SMS to me and I send you a canned response. So that is, that is sort of hello world for Twilio. So let's go back to my Sinatra app, and let's just go ahead and do this. So, oh, so the, the first thing I'm actually going to do is uh, go ahead and require the Twilio Ruby library. So we have helper libraries for every major language you can think of. Um, and of course, we have a helper library for, uh, for Ruby. Um, and this is pretty simple. I'm just going to go ahead and uh, create a new uh, Twimmel response object. Uh, so Quick aside, um, when you are writing a web application uh, and the browser hits your web server, you typically res respond to the web browser with HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. That's the stuff you're shipping over the wire to the browser. Um, in the world of Twilio, um, when Twilio hits your URL, you actually need to respond back with some specially formatted XML. Um, and there's really great documentation for exactly what that XML needs to look like. Um, thankfully, for a Ruby developer, you actually don't have to ever think about XML. Um, you can use Ruby. You can use, <laughs> yay. Well, I mean, it's not totally. I mean, it's, you know, this, is, this syntax is going to look very similar, uh, very similar to people who've used Builder to just build XML from scratch. So it's not, it's not totally beautifully abstracted, but uh, it's, it's not bad. Um, in this case, I'm just going to go ahead uh, and create, um, send a little message back to you all. So I'll say, uh, you know, thanks for helping me out with my talk. Uh, people in Portland are awesome. So that's just me sucking up to you. Um, and yay, <laughs> everyone likes to get sucked up to, um, even me. Tell me how great I am. Um, and uh, this is it. So this is, this is hello world uh, in the world of Twilio. Um, 
And one thing that's cool is, I mean, obviously, I, I can paste this URL down here, and we can all test it. But I'm a nervous web developer like most of you, and I want to check that it works. And the way that I test my web apps is by <laughs> testing them in the browser. right? No, not unit tests, testing them in the browser. That's what I do. Cool, awesome. So, you know, so whatever, whatever tools you would, whatever tools or process you would normally use to test your web application, you can, you can, you can test your Twilio applications the exact same way. So I feel super secure that this works. Um, you, you might notice that this is running um, on, my, on my machine, on my local host. I'm going to use a little uh, piece of tunneling software called ngrok to pop this up on the public internet. Um, but you don't have to care about that. For, for local development and debugging, ngrok is awesome. <laughs> but in the real world, you just deploy this to you know, your paths of choice. Couldn't you just paste the local host URL into the website? Nope. <laughs> we should try that. We should see what happens. <laughs> it would not end well for me. Um, cool. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. And it's going to tell me that I've, uh, that I've gone ahead and made my configuration change. So now, uh, this is the interactive portion of the demo. If you could all just take out your phones and send a quick test text message to this phone number right here. Um, don't say you don't, you don't have a phone. Every single person here has a cell phone. I know. I checked. Um, it's, uh, the number is 503-305-4613. Uh, um, and uh, hopefully, you'll just get a, a polite little canned reply from me. Um, and in fact, I will go ahead and play along. Actually, no, I will not play along because that's going to mess up the last half of my tem demonstration. But I see, I see a bunch of, I see a bunch of uh, hits um, hit, hitting my route. Um, so I think, is this? Are people getting responses? What's the number again? Uh, it is five zero three three zero five four six one three. Is that just like so? <laughs> I, so I've worked. I've been working at Twilio for about two and a half years now. I've never been accused of spamming anyone yet, but you know, I'm just going to knock on wood. Uh, cool. So presumably this is working, um, and now we can kind of move along to some more fun stuff: um, the WebRTC and the uh, and the Web Audio stuff. So, what is WebRTC? So for those of you hoping to get uh, a real deep dive into the nuts and bolts of WebRTC. I'm sorry to disappoint you. Um, I'm, that is not part of this presentation. And part of that is because um, WebRTC is not simple. Um, it is certainly not simple enough for a 20 minute uh, time slot, even if it was all that I was talking about. Um, and the fact that it's not simple is actually a feature, not a bug. Um, the people uh, who really worked on the earliest iterations of the WebRTC spec decided early on that there really wasn't a one-size-fits-all solution for real-time communications in the browser. Um, so really, the truth is, the reason that WebRTC isn't simple is because it's, it's a lot, it's many, many, many things um, that if you want to build an end-to-end -end solution, you'll have to kind of cobble together on your own. Um, but uh, but uh, all is not lost. Uh, there's a wonderful website that I highly recommend called simplewebrtc.com. Um, it was put together by a really wonderful company called And Yet. Um, they're pretty deep in the WebRTC space. And uh, at simplewebrtc.com, you'll find three things. You'll find some libraries that make it easier to work with WebRTC. Uh, you'll find some free web services that they provide um, so that you don't have to stand up your own equivalents. Uh, and you'll also just find some content um, that explains a little bit more about what, what WebRTC is. Um, in addition, uh, for those of you who actually work at a company where you think that you're going to build um, and deploy a public-facing WebRTC product, uh, this is a pretty useful website. It's called, uh, I know you can't read it, but uh, by the way, all these slides will be um, online later. Uh, it's called iswebrtcreadyyet.com. And it simply provides a matrix of a bunch of core features of WebRTC and all of the major web browsers. So you know, if you're in a, if you're in a position of, of building software that people are going to use out in the real world, this is a good web website to reference, because um, you may have to have a fallback uh, strategy of some kind. So uh, moving along, um, how does WebRTC fit into what Twilio does? So I showed you a little parlor trick uh, with SMS. So Twilio is this cloud thing um, at the top. And you can imagine, kind of like piped off of the top of Twilio, is interconnectivity with the global telecommunications system, stuff that you never, ever want to touch with your own hands. 
Um, down here on the bottom, um, on the far right, you just have phones. You've got cell phones, landlines, you know, any kind of traditional phone. Uh, in the middle, you have native mobile applications. Um, so Twilio has SDKs for iOS and Android, which is pretty cool. Um, and then on the left, you've got browsers. So, uh, and uh, web, what Twilio uses WebRTC to uh, enable your browser to connect to the Twilio cloud and actually function um, as a phone, um, either from the perspective of receiving phone calls um, or making phone calls. There are a lot of use cases you can imagine, but just the simplest is just click to call. You know, you've got a web page, you're, you're trying to sell somebody something, or perhaps you're trying to provide customer support of some kind, and there's just a button, and the person clicks the button, and presto, they're connected with someone um, in a real live uh, voice conversation. <coughs> so, and this, uh, and we call this, we call all of these VoIP technologies Twilio client. So the next thing that I want to do is um, I actually want to open up the uh, dev tools. And I just want to, I want to write some code to turn, you know, my browser, my Chrome browser into a phone. Um, and actually what I want to do is I want to randomly call one of the people who called me. Um, and I've got my, uh, yeah, maybe, you know, it's possible. You know, <laughs> yeah, I've got, I have tons of beer I can offer. Um, <laughs> So, uh, but you know, we have we have a we have a we have an interesting security problem um, that's worth discussing. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and just get started on this. So, you know, uh, I didn't show this, but Twilio generally, uh, Twilio always requires authentication to use the RESTful API. So, if you want to initiate a phone call or do anything with Twilio, uh, you have a, effectively a username and a password that you need to use. And in fact, I can show you mine. Um, well, at least I can show you the username part. So this is my account SID, effectively my username, and then there's an auth token. And this is what I use to authenticate with Twilio. This is what Twilio uses to validate that I have permission to do certain things. Um, and this works great on the server. Um, on the server, if I'm writing server-side code that's accessing the Twilio REST API to make a phone call, yeah, I don't have to worry that my account SID or my auth token are going to get compromised. But we're kind of in a pickle with the browser, right? I mean, I want to write some JavaScript in the browser that ultimately makes a phone call. Um, but I can't worry about my username and password being exposed. So anyway, the Twilio did come up with a solution to this. It's called a JSON web token. I don't know how many of you have, are familiar with JSON web tokens, but it's an open standard. Um, and it's, one, it's, it's yet another web standard that Twilio decided to leverage. Um, and it's really simple. Um, in, in essence, what I do is uh, I create this new thing called a capability. And the capability object, uh, capability, and I tell it what my uh, account SID and my auth token are. So I actually have these uh, saved as environment variables. So Twilio account SID and uh, Twilio auth token. So that's cool. Um, I now have authenticated to Twilio, um, but I'm not done yet. I, I still need to tell. I still need to embed in this capability token what the browser is allowed to do. Um, in this case, I want to I want to tell the browser that it's allowed to make an outgoing phone call. Um, so I'm going to say allow client outgoing. Um, but I need to pass it. Uh, I need to pass it a variable, um, and that uh, that brings us to this little part of the Twilio Dev Tools. So, kind of like with my actually, I'll show you, I'll show you my phone number. So remember, with my phone number, I had these two webhooks. And you saw what happened, right? An SMS came into this phone number, and Twilio called this webhook. I need to do something really similar, but in the VoIP scenario. So if I have like a button on a web page, I need to be able, I need to tell Twilio, hey, what's the URL to in, to call and get instructions for how to handle that phone call that's happening in the browser? Um, and we call those Twimmel apps. Um, they're they're poorly named, but uh, it's, but they're really easy to use. Um, I can create a new Twimmel app. And I can give it a friendly name, in which case I'll just go ahead and call this uh, pdx.rb. Uh, and I can give it uh, a request URL, right? Which is great. So it's very similar to the request URL that we did for the SMS. So let me go ahead and grab um, this domain. We'll go ahead and paste it here. And I'm going to call, sorry, it's the wrong form. And I'm going to go ahead and call, uh, create a path called random. So essentially what this is going to do is when the browser tries to initiate the phone call, Twilio is going to hit this URL, and this is going to provide instructions on, how, on like, which random person to call. So I can go ahead and save this. And when I do save it, 
you'll see that there is now, whoops, that's the list view. There is now a unique ID, a unique SID associated with this uh, Twimble app, which I can go back and paste into my Sinatra code or my Ruby code. Uh, and that is it. So now I can simply pass this back. I can pass the, the token back to the browser. Now the browser has everything it needs to actually initiate that outbound phone call. And I can verify that this works um, the way that all the web developers do by simply typing into the browser. And in case you were curious, that's what a JSON web token looks like, a bunch of gibberish that you'll never reverse engineer ever. So I'm almost done. Um, the last thing I need to do is actually write the code to uh, call the random person. So why don't we go ahead and just create a function called random. Uh, let's see. And in order to do this, uh, I now actually have to use the Twilio REST API, that thing that I was talking about earlier that I need to authenticate to. Um, it's pretty easy. Uh, just say Twilio REST client new, and it's going to want the account SID and the auth token. So I'm going to go ahead and give it to it. And awesome. So now I have uh, a live handle to the Twilio REST API, and I can do stuff. Um, one thing, uh, the thing that I'm going to do right now is simply query it to get all of the phone numbers um, of the people who sent me an SMS just now. So I'm going to, which is totally legit. I'm not going to do anything with it. I swear to God. <laughs> uh, so uh, you might have noticed I had lots of phone numbers in my account. So I just need to scope this query down to uh, just the just the phone number um, that we used. So let me go back to my numbers, just paste this in. Cool. All right, so now I've got, effectively, I have all of your messages. Um, so I'm going to use the sample method to just pluck a random message from this array. Uh, and now we can go ahead and create some more Twimmel, um, because that's what we want to do. We want to we dial this person. Uh, we'll just change this say r.dial. Um, one thing I have to do, uh, which I mess up all the time, I actually have to set the, call, the caller ID manually on this um, because I'm calling you from the browser. <laughs> and the browser doesn't have a phone number. And there needs, there needs to be something in your caller ID or you're going to freak out. Um, so we'll go ahead and just set the caller ID to be the phone number that I purchased. Um, and lastly, uh, we're just going to go ahead and say d.number and then uh, message.from. So you know, assuming I didn't make any horrific coding mistakes, uh, this should call uh, a random person in the audience. Um, and hey, you know, I'm, I'm pretty used to doing this. Why don't, we, uh, why don't we go ahead and just test this out? Awesome. Works. So cool. So now we're, I'm using the JavaScript console in my browser. So uh, the first thing I need to do is just initialize the Twilio uh, SDK. Actually. Um, and in order to do that, uh, all you need to do, all you need to do as a web developer, um, is just uh, include uh, this uh, script command. So this is just one line, one script command that's going to import the Twilio JS SDK into your web application. So I'm going to go ahead and save that and uh, refresh, refresh this browser. And cool. So now I'm going to go ahead and just use uh, jQuery to fetch that uh, that token that we're generating in Sinatra. And then when we're done, use it to uh, initialize the uh, Twilio uh, JS SDK, which is pretty easy. So twilio.device.setup um, passing uh, this JSON web token. OK, rad. So you know, no fancy visualization, but like this browser is like Twilio enabled, <laughs> which is, you know, and I'll, I'll prove it, I'll prove it just in right, right now. So now all I need to do is um, I just need to tell Twilio. There's actually one thing I need to do that you don't normally have to do, but it fits into this web, the web audio API thing that I want to show you. Um, so this is just a little event handler. Uh, when the connection gets made, uh, I want to stash uh, something on the window object called a stream. And I'll explain what the stream is in a second. Um, but I can get that from con.mediaStream. Uh, dot stream. So I'm not running any code right now. This is just sort of a little event handler. Oops. Uh, let's see. Ah, uh, sorry. Device.connect. Okay. Sweet. Okay, so now I'm actually going to make the call. So hopefully 
you all still have your phones on you. And let's go. Oh, and you'll notice, because this is powered by WebRTC, Chrome has asked me for permission to use my microphone. And I don't want to ruin my demo, so I'll say yes. Sorry, an application oh. error has occurred. That is a sad, that's a sad panda right there. So uh, luckily, I'm a develop. Ah, ah, 404 not found. OK, rock on. Uh, that's, it is useful to remember that when you configure Twilio to hit your web server, uh, you can actually tell Twilio whether to make GET or POST uh, HTTP requests. And in this case, sadly, um, I failed to configure it to send a GET request which is one of the less horrible errors I could have made. So I'm not too ashamed of myself. Um, so cool. So I'm going to go ahead and just change this setting and go ahead and rerun the code. Hello. What's your name? Awesome. OK, don't hang up, Kyle. We don't hang up. We need you. <laughs> All right, I won't. OK, cool. So this works. I'm very happy about that. Um, so the, the, la the last thing that I wanted to show you um, is that remember when I stashed uh, the media stream um, on the window? So Web, WebRTC and the Web, who here has played around with the, the uh, Web Audio API? <laughs> yeah, like not very many people. Hey, look, me neither six weeks ago, OK? Um, the Web Audio API is one of those things, much like WebRTC, that's moving at a lightning pace. Um, but it's really, really fun. And you can do some cool things with it. And uh, one thing that I learned is that uh, WebRTC and the Web Audio API, let's see. Uh, it's OK. Don't worry about it. Um, oh, you know what? I'll just lower the volume. They, 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 uh, they share this notion of a media stream. So when a call is live, as it is right now, uh, there are media streams. There's a media stream for me, and there's a media stream for Kyle. Um, and in the Web Audio API world, you can you can use those, but you can you can access those media streams, um, and you can potentially uh, manipulate them uh, or visualize them. Um, so I thought I thought that'd be kind of fun. So uh, so I did that. So this is a this will be uh, a visualization of uh, of the audio conversation that me and Kyle are having. Um, and I'll, I, I'm, not, I'm not going to live code this. It's, uh, it's a lot of code. <laughs> not a lot, but I mean, you know, 37 lines of code. Um, but uh, I, can, I can walk you through it. Um, essentially, I'm going to pass this method, visualize media stream, uh, the stream that I've stashed on the window. Actually, let me, uh, let me validate that it works first, because it'll be much less embarrassing to walk through it if it, if it actually works. <laughs> uh, so window.stream. Hey, it's visualized. Look at that. Cool. Awesome. So, uh, so this works. I'm very happy about that. And uh, yeah, let me go back to the code. So essentially, uh, everything is always going to start with an audio context. That is sort of the, the nexus by which uh, you're going to manipulate or visualize uh, audio. Um, the next thing is uh, we're going to create an analyzer, which is essentially going to allow us to kind of peek into that stream and expose some time and frequency data. Uh, we're then going to essentially connect the stream that we've passed into the method into that audio context. Uh, we're going to set a bunch of a couple context uh, constants that I don't really know what they do. I found them on the internet. Uh, they seem to work okay. Uh, but I th but I think the the the, the part that is uh, that's really most interesting and relevant to all of you um, or to anyone who wants to do something like this is uh, this method right here. So the script processor. Is uh, it's it's an object that uh, allows allows us to process audio, um, or actually I believe perhaps even video, um, and there's a method, there's a, an event that called on audio process that you can override and define any way you like. So in essence, every time some audio gets processed in our application, this this function gets called, and uh, it is it is in this code right here that I'm sort of pulling out the overall amount of volume that's taking place during the call. And I'm using it to modify uh, this, this circle, um, which is just a, a circle drawn um, using the D3 uh, you know, uh, graphics framework. So, uh, so yeah, so that, that's it, Kyle. You can, go, you can go ahead and hang up the phone and presumably. No, so sadly, due to some limitations, and this thing should die at some point 
once Kyle hangs up the phone and now it's dead. Um, sadly, at the moment, um, it's only, uh, and this is, this is a bug, this is something that they're working to fix. It only works on my microphone here on my browser. Um, I am not allowed to do the same kind of thing with the stream that's coming from Kyle. But that's a, that's a bug that Google is aware of and they're, they're working to fix. So uh, yeah, so that's, that's pretty much it. Uh, I wanted to keep this talk uh, nice, nice, and, nice and quick. Um, once again, my name is Carter Rabasa. Um, I will be, uh, this presentation for the most part is posted on GitHub right now. Um, I'm gonna, I'll probably make a couple quick updates, um, but it's right here. Um, you should feel free to sign up for signupatwilio.com. Um, it's free for developers to play around. And there is a, a promo code PDXRB um, for $20 of free Twilio credit. Um, other than that, um, I will go ahead and get off the stage and I'll stick around in case anybody has any questions. Thank you very much. <laughs>